Hey everyone, it's Tommy from the Glowy Crease Network, and we are back at Catalyst Strength and Functional Nutrition here in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, in the last video, we did a metabolic day, and this day is a strength training day. So you're going to see a lot less cardio-intensive exercises, and this time you are going to see a lot more strength training exercises. However, just like the last video, we always start off each session by doing a rollout. And as you can see in this extremely flattering position, we are rolling out the sides of the glutes. I already did my lower back. And we are also going to do a little bit of the sides of the hamstrings just because we have quite a few leg exercises to do today. And of course, you'll see here any moment we will take out one of the foam balls and we will do the calves just like last time. Now, for all of you watching out there, I definitely recommend picking up some foam rollers. I love doing this before every exercise. It gets everything moving. You can feel your muscles start to break up a little bit, and that way they're not so tense when you start your exercises. So definitely get some for your home use. I also like to use these after tournaments or after really hard games when you might feel some really tight muscles, or like I said, in a tournament, you might have a game and then you're really sore before the next game. I love to just roll out for a good 5-10 minutes before that next game and it works out really well. You are definitely ready to go. So I definitely recommend picking up some of these and don't forget to get the foam ball as well because you're going to want that for the calf to get that extra maneuverability to get up and down the calf and side to side. And I also like to use it on the front of my calf a little bit. I don't know that you're going to see that here today, uh, but I like to use it on the front a little bit whenever you're getting you know, some shin splints and stuff like that. So it looks like we're ready to get started with our PRIs, so let's get going. Now PRI stands for the Postural Restoration Institute, which basically is a therapeutic system based on the natural asymmetries of the human body. And I know that sounds really weird, but stay with me here. This particular exercise is called the balloon blow. And you'll see here in a second that I am leaned slightly to the left, and I am, as you can see here, pulling up on my toes. Now, what this allows me to do is strengthen my diaphragm, which is different on your left side than your right side because it has to make room for your lungs and your heart. So by doing this exercise and trying to blow into the balloon three times without using your hands strengthens the diaphragm, and this really works. Try it on your own. It's really interesting. Now Eric and I are going to move on to the inchworm with alternating toe reach, and this is one of my favorite exercises. Now, Jim would say that it's aimed at creating a neutral inhibition in the posterior chain of your body. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that you are increasing the range of motion in the ankles and hamstrings. And you can definitely see how that does that with each of these alternating toe reaches. I love to do this exercise before Almost every workout that I do, and especially when I go to the gym on my own, I love to work out with this exercise, especially because as you drive that opposite heel down, it really works on your calves and you're definitely going to feel it. So definitely try this one out in your exercise and remember to drive that heel down as you reach back to that opposite toe. Now we have the PRI floor press, and this is one that I can sometimes struggle with, and that's why Eric is going to be instrumental here in making sure that I'm doing this one appropriately. So the point of this exercise aims to coordinate my left and right sides of my body to work together. So you can see here, I believe that is either a 20 or 25 pound weight in my left hand. And here's the thing, you're going to drive up with the opposite leg. Now, on this one right here, you saw when I initially pushed up, I wasn't bringing my hip up to an appropriate height, and my leg, my opposite leg, my left leg, was going way too high. So what I was doing was actually driving up with the wrong leg. Now, you can see here that I've switched legs, but it's the same concept, and this is what Eric is trying to show me right here. I need to push up with my left leg and make sure that my right leg is extended out in line which allows me to make sure that my left and my right sides of my body are moving at the same time. Now you can see I have it much better. Maybe still extending a little bit too much with my right leg here, but the whole point here is to make sure that I'm driving up with my left leg at the same time as driving up with my right arm. And this is definitely an exercise where practice makes perfect. Now next is another really fun one that I love to do, and it's called the hex bar squat. 
This is a compromise between a squat and a deadlift without loading your spine and keeping your gravity line better centered. So that means typically better form and less risk of injury, especially if you have a great trainer such as Eric who's really showing you what you're doing. As you can see here, my back is completely straight and in line with my neck and my head. And that is one thing that I struggle with and that is one thing that you'll see later Eric will correct me on again. However, you can see here I am standing straight up and now I'm going to squat down and this is sort of a squat and a deadlift in one. So this is why I really like this exercise. It does put quite a bit of stress on your grip so you just have to make sure that you know if you have relatively weak hands or if you have soft hands you may want to use some grippers on this exercise especially as you go up in weight. This one is a fantastic exercise to do six or eight reps with a quite a bit of weight and that way as you are going up and down you are really exerting yourself. You don't necessarily feel it on the first three or four but definitely by the time you get to six or eight you are definitely going to feel this one. Now these cross body crunches are absolutely killer for your abs and it is fantastic. You are definitely going to feel this at around rep you know 10 or 12 and you have 12 to 15 of these. Now as you can see here I have a five pound weight in my hand but this actually maybe is a little bit much and so in the next view we actually ditch the five pounds and we just do it all natural. Now you can see here it is extremely important to make sure that your back is rounding on the BOSU and that way it really opens it up and you have great form coming up to that opposite leg. Again this is an absolutely killer exercise that is extremely difficult as you go on with more reps. It doesn't look that difficult, but try it out on your own and you're definitely going to feel it burn. Now I know we've all seen flat dumbbell flies before, but it's really interesting working with Eric and the other trainers at Catalyst, I see a lot of people do them incorrectly. And so Eric is working with me here on making sure that I have really good form. This isn't really just an arm and chest exercise, even though that's part of my plan and that's part of my goal, more strength in the arms and in the chest. However, it's involving many more muscles than just your arms and your chest. It is also involving your legs and your back. So one thing Eric is constantly reminding me to do here is make sure that the small of my back is touching the bench that is beneath of me. So you will often see this in gyms where people are bringing the small of their back up or their waist or their hips up, trying to get a little more leverage to make sure that they are getting that weight up. And unfortunately what they're probably doing is they're using too much weight and therefore they're not using very good form. So one thing that I am also doing here is making sure that I am driving force down through my heels. And you can see that in my calves here, there's quite a bit of muscle that is being used in stabilizing my core and stabilizing my entire body as I'm bringing those weights down on a three count and then pushing them back up. So despite the fact that it is quite a bit of weight that I am doing here, and because I am doing it on a three count, I'm still able to do this because of the really good form, making sure that my chest and the small of my back are reaching down to the bench, and that I'm stabilizing my core and my body by driving through my calves into my heels. Now here's another killer exercise that really doesn't look that bad, but trust me, it can get really bad, especially at those later reps. So this one's called a wall squat on a stability ball with dumbbells. So you're going to see here, I'm going to have some dumbbells in my hands as I use the stability ball to make sure that I am going up and down, basically squatting against the wall. Now what this allows me to do is train my quads without straining my lower back. And this is definitely a concern of mine, especially as a goalie, I've had some back injuries and especially in my lower back. So if you're a goalie like me who has had some of those injuries or who might feel a little bit of a pinch sometimes or might have just a bad lower back in general, this may be the exercise for you to help train those quads, but make sure that you're not injuring your back at the same time. So I have quite a bit of weight here in my hands and you're not really going to feel like you're using it that much. However, you are going down, just like here, in a seated position, and then pushing yourself back up. Again, this doesn't really look that difficult, but trust me, as you get to number 10 or number 15 on this rep, you are definitely feeling the burn in your quads. Now you're going to see here, it's going to change the view here, and you're going to see what's really going on here. And you can see, I'm bringing my feet out quite a bit, 
because I want to make sure that I'm getting a really good squat all the way down to a seated position and then using that ball in order to get me back up. Really good form, flat back here and slightly rounding in the lower back, which is perfectly fine, just making sure that you're doing it appropriately. So now we move immediately onto another tough one, which are planks with the feet on stability ball and shoulder taps. So that's a mouthful for something that really is not that difficult, except that you have so many of these. So you're going to have 10 each side, and while you are doing this, you pretty much want to just get it over with. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, and that's not to say I don't like this exercise, because I actually do. However, you do have 10 each side, and so it becomes very difficult, especially as you get to those last ones, to make sure that you have good form, you're staying on top of the ball, and you are slightly rounding your back to make sure that your form is really good. So it is difficult, but it is a fun one. Now, at the end of every strength day, you end up with a little bit of metabolic mixed in. So we call these intervals, and basically this is a circuit typically of three different exercises that get your cardio going, get your heart rate going. So it's a nice little ending to the entire day. Now, again, you guys have seen these before in the metabolic day, and you can see this time at least I am doing it more symmetrically, so I'm not really bringing up that left hand like it's a catch glove or a blocker or anything like that. So we're just kind of going back and forth here. And then we're going to move on to, of course, the mountain climbers on the slide board and then the push-ups. Now, again, it's 15 push-ups. And as you can see, this time I am not struggling. And in fact, in my personal program, I am up to about 25 to 30 at a time. So I've definitely seen some progress. And then in case you guys are trying to emulate this program at home, you have the three interval exercises and you will do them for three sets. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. There are many more videos coming up, including game videos where you're going to see the enhancement and performance that I've had because of this program, as well as a lot more videos about my workout program. And don't forget to check out the description below where you can find more information about Catalyst Strength and Functional Nutrition here in St. Louis. And I've included Jim's email address below in case you have any questions for him. So again, like, comment, and subscribe. And Good luck. I'll see you out on the ice.